you are working with your sister. Yeah, we, we are two, and uh, we are the first woman who run a place like this. And um, yeah, we decided to continue with our tradition uh, because my family is there since the middle, uh, since uh, the 1884. So this year is the 136. Wow, that's incredible. It was my father, huh? Roberto, my grandfather, Nedis, my great-grandfather, Giovanni, and my great-great-grandfather, Domenico, the founder of the place. That's what we call the family business, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a real family business, it's incredible. Yeah. We have the fifth generation. It's a love and passion that yeah. our dad passed to us, and so we learned this from him. Because roughly, how, how long does it take to, uh, to build a, a gondola from, uh, from scratch? My father makes uh, five, six months for make one. Four to six months. Ah, it's long, long time. What's the size of the gondola? 11 meter 10. 11 meter 10. And large 1 meter 42. Always. 142. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because uh, um, 42, because uh, here we use uh, the um, Piede Veneto. It's a measure, mm -hmm. only in Venice we have. Every uh, feet is divided in inches. Every inches is a 2.9 centimeter. Ah. With our Measure is easy to remind the, the measure of the gondola, but in centimeters, one meter forty two. Okay. okay, that's why. But the most important about the gondola is that, is that the gondola is asymmetrical. Okay. What do you mean? If you watch the gondola from here, you can see that this side, so the left side is more curved than oh, the yeah? right side. Yeah, it's incredible. This so why? is why, because uh, it's driving only with one gondolier. So the gondolier is there, when you drive the gondola, could it go to the left for a physical low when the water touch the side, push the gondola to the right. This two power and the gondola goes straight with only one man. And uh, the, the driver of the gondola is always on the left yes. side? Yes. It's it's never on the right No, no, always there. And you told us something incredible about the weight of the gondolier and you have to adapt the gondola depending on the weight. So it's completely made to measure. Yeah. Yeah, because it depends how, how, how is the weight. If the gondola is very big, the back part we make it a bit higher because the line between the two iron has to be parallel to the water. So you have to go under the bridge. So, so, for the so the line better. between the top here and the top here exactly. must be perfect. Parallel to the water, yes. How many layers of painting do you have? For a new gondola, it's a six coat with brush. No spray or something like this. Or no okay. roller. With brush. And it's perfect like that. She's very good. <laughs> and how often does the gondola have to come back and. Uh, Depends uh, on the weather. But um, every more or less 50 year, uh, days they have to come to clean. It uh, depends. If it's very hot, there's more barnacles. Depends. Okay. So now your goal, when do you think you'll be able to construct completely a gondola by yourself? I don't know. But it's the goal. You would like to? Yeah, we would too. This is uh, our goal, yes. But you need a lot of time. You have to understand my father started here for uh, 16 years old. He passed away in the 63. Yeah, so it's a long career. Yeah. It's a strange, uh, because it's not with a computer, ah, this is the design, okay, we make this. The gun is asymmetrical, it's, uh, a, it's a unique, like all boats in wood, but the gun is, is very special. We find a quaderno uh, right by our dad, with all the secret, with all the stuff. So with this, uh, maybe, one day. One day. <laughs> but what you are sure is that when you will be 60 years old, you will be still working with gondolas. I hope. 
I hope, yes, because uh, for us it's not only work, it's something more. It's legacy. Yeah, it's our home here, so mm -hmm. we love this place and we are so proud what we what our family did in the past. So we want to make proud also them. So mm. There is one part of the gondola that is very important, and I don't remember the name, it's where you put the... Um, the forcola. The forcola. So the forcola, it's uh, something that we will uh, see later. It's another uh, artisan. So yes. that's something very important for the, for the gondola. This is very important. This is the remer, he's the artisan. It's very important because you have to understand, this is like the, the key of, for, for a car. Okay. Without the forca, you stay. Yes. You don't. <laughs> it's for the set and the or and the and the man is the motor that will hmm. go. And so the remer he does only that, only the forcola. Forcola and the or. Okay, incredible. The forcola is uh, one of the main uh, parts of the um, gondola. It's like the steering wheel on a car. And uh, it's a wooden object uh, where the gondolier places the oar to control and to maneuver the, the boat, the gondola, in each situation. So you have to think to the narrow canals in Venice uh, and uh, without the forcola, you haven't got the, the right balance and the right uh, levery system to control the boat. And so it's a fundamental part of the, of the gondola and uh, it's always, for this reason, it's always customized to the, to the, um, to the special, uh, to the singular client, to the singular gondolier. Each gondolier has his own forcola on his gondola, and, um, according to his tallness and so on. So, uh, the forcola is a um, particular object existing only in Venice because uh, uh, only here we have developed uh, during the centuries this particular mm, rowing technique. I, I worked it by hand uh, for the 80% of the, the process and, uh, and then I finish it with oil and oil, more oil, because uh, um, we need to preserve the, the forcola from the, the weather but to maintain open the, the wood pores and not block them uh, with a vernish and so on. For the model, uh, traditional model for the gondola, I need uh, about 35-40 uh, hours of work. 